other day I received a 27 inch uh, LCD monitor for repair and um, I decided well let's see what we can do to get this thing up and running. Checked inside, found the main power supply board was blown to hell and decided well I have a few options, get all of the manufacturer which I did, they quoted me for a new power supply board which they had to fit, they wouldn't supply it unfortunately. Um, I subsequently received a pretty high quote for that, passed it on to the client, the client cancelled it. To cut a long story short, I now have this 27 inch monitor. So let's have a look inside and firstly check if the rest of the monitor is 100% functional before we go ahead and build a power solution for it. The inside of this uh, monitor uh, consists of three boards, including the power supply board, this fellow over here. Um, this is the guy over here that uh, the main capacitor blew and some various other parts on the bottom of the board over here have also gone honky-dory and blown. Um, so yeah, we've had a look at it. Uh, on the connector for this power supply, let me just show you guys up close and personal. See if we can get focus on there. You'll see we have ground, 5 volts, 12 volts, common rails. So those two pins, 5 volts, those two pins, 12 volts, those two pins not connected, and those two pins are ground. Now that, in turn, connects 5 volts and 12 volts to this connector over here. So technically what that means is this wire needs 12 volts, this wire needs 5 volts, and these two wires need to be on a common ground. Uh, to power this set externally. I know it's a recording of the computer screen but over here I found a meanwhile power supply from a local supplier um, it will input 220 volts and output 5 volts and 12 volts simultaneously allowing me 60 watts combined so it's a switching power supply it will give me 4 amps at 5 volts and 3 amps at 12 volts um, totaling 56 watts um, and it is a 60 watt peak so this over here seems like it could be a good option and at a price of around 260 rand that I can get it for locally that's not a bad price at all so um, I know it's going to be a bit of a Frankenstein hack but um, I think uh, this is a way to get the uh, monstrous monitor back up and running alright so here we've got the 27 inch Mesa monitor hooked up a, to a PC power supply and to my laptop just so that we can uh, basically see that it is functioning 100%. Uh, let's get in a little bit closer there. There's no trouble whatsoever uh, with the screen. Uh, seems to be functioning very well. And uh, now just to set up and create the power supply for it. Uh, let me just go handheld and show you guys what we've done at the back. This is just as a temporary solution. What we've done is we've actually brought the 5 volts and 12 volt rails out and connected it now to the PC power supply uh, for testing purposes. And uh, as you can see, the screen is working great. Hey guys, uh, we're back here with a Franken monitor. <laughs> I like to call it that. I'm just busy uh, tidying it up. I'm going to get some heat shrink and stuff onto these connectors. But um, over here, I've specially double sided taped this computer power supply onto the back. I know it's a bit overkill for what we need, um, but it, it's a way of getting things done without spending any money, uh, hence the Franken monitor. Uh, I'm just busy connecting the power rails which I've modified from internally inside the power supply to only the 512 ground and power on signals so what happens is the power supply gets its power on signal from the actual monitor um, instead of being on all the time uh, it uh, actually gets the signal from internally which uh, seems to be working quite nicely um, now just to finish up this connections and uh, let's uh, take a look at this monitor's display and to finish off this uh, project, guys, there you have it, the Franken monitor. 
Um, now this power supply is quite clean. It's a PC based power supply. I chose the one with a fan like this just because of um, uh, heat extraction. Although this thing's not going to be pulling hardly anything from this. Um, you've got your power rails running in here into the LCD monitor. And if you flip it to the side, like so. Let's just see if you can see that there. You've got your mains input, your VGA inputs, and then your main power switch. Not bad, actually, um, for this. Now let's uh, power it up and make sure that it's working. Okay, first things first with our Franken monitor. Let's uh, get some power connected up over here. Turn it on. We have power, guys. There you go. Franken monitor up and running. Now let's connect it up to the computer and make sure all's well and ends well. Okay, boys and girls, there's the Franken monitor uh, all connected up, running on my workbench computer. I'd say all is definitely well and ends well. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much as you can see, although it's not necessarily the the de facto right way of doing things, there are ways of getting these things up and running relatively cheaply, um, sometimes without even spending any money, like I did in this case over here. Um, I wouldn't do this for a client's monitor, but because this monitor is now mine, I thought, what have I got to lose? Why spend the 650 rand South African rands or $60 on the power supply when I had quite a few PC power supplies lying around here in the lab? Let's just retask one. Done and dusted. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. So, that uh, ends that episode of the Franken monitor. Um, the Franken monitor is in use on uh, Liz's desk now in the workshop uh, office space, well next to the workshop. So uh, it's being used daily, running beautifully, uh, no problems whatsoever. I eventually went that way because I thought, well like I said, why not just retask what I currently had, get the thing up and running on the bench. There's another monitor which I have received, let me just grab it and show you guys. It is this uh, Samsung. It's a much smaller one, it's a little a uh, non-VGA, I mean, not non-VGA, non-HD monitor, um, more or less for an office computer or a workbench computer or something like that, where I've had to do something very similar, because um, here in South Africa you find it difficult to get the right connectors. So what I've done is I've just basically put another connector in there and I've run out, I don't know if you can see it over there, where you can plug in your power supply, um, this monitor is now also usable here in the workshop, uh, etc. Now the way I would have done that, had I had time or such, I would have actually mounted a chassis mount uh, socket onto the back of the monitor. But hey, I'll get that done at a later stage when I have a bit more time on it. So yeah, guys, these, these things are not scary. They've, there's very little electronics inside them. They're simple at best. Um, much simpler than a television set, for example, which has a control board, etc. So don't be afraid to dig into your monitors, fix them up, get them back up and working, and don't be scared if it doesn't necessarily fit the de facto standard. If it's for you, it really makes no difference. Just make the thing work. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. Cheers, guys. Have a good weekend. Here we have the 27-inch uh, Franken monitor um, on Liz's desk, uh, standing without any problems uh, on the desk at the top edge. Um, the power supply itself is not touching the wall or the curtains or, the, uh, or anything like that. It's uh, probably a good 10 centimeters away at least. And uh, yeah, usability affected not at all. Why did I go this route? Well, quite simply because I didn't want to spend any money to make this thing work. Uh, like I said, if it was for a customer, I would believe that it would be better to buy the original power supply or another power supply that would fit inside and spend that money. But uh, in this circumstance, I thought, hey, I've got the power supply. Let me just go and do it this way and uh, get myself a nice up and working 27-inch Mesa monitor. Guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, take care, everyone.